Today I've done the unthinkable. Nokia has challenged me to switch from the 1200 euro Galaxy S10 5G to the 99 euro Nokia 2.2. I'm a little worried about it, about whether the battery's gonna pull through and whether the camera is gonna take good enough photos, especially in low light later on. Anyways, today we're gonna be heading to a zoo with a very specific goal in mind. And so whilst waiting for a car, I did notice some compromises compared to my S10. It's got a polycarbonate finish as opposed to glass, and obviously the quality of the display is not there. It still feels sturdy, and on the bright side, the dimensions of the phone are actually a refreshing change. It's just kind of nice to have a phone you can put in your pocket and forget about. Okay, off we go, and whilst the video quality on this phone is pretty much bang on what you'd expect for 100 euros, I think the photo quality is really gonna impress you. So that's exactly what I did on the way. I spent about 20 minutes just taking photos of various different scenes. I had a quick play with the dedicated Google Assistant button, and because earlier I downloaded some of my most used applications, I dove straight into Lightroom to have a quick edit of those photos, which turned this photo, for example, into this photo, or as another example, this shot into this. Okay, so I've just arrived at Twycross Zoo, and they've supposedly just opened up a brand new state-of-the-art tiger enclosure. So I thought goal for today is to get a really good shot of the tigers with this budget phone. So firstly, I met up with Joe, who, if you don't already know, is the first member of the Mr. Who's the Boss team. And together, we set out to figure where exactly we're at with this device, how can a phone be so cheap, and what are the noticeable compromises? Worth noting here is that there isn't a fingerprint scanner on the phone, but you do get face unlocking, but I've just stuck to using the pattern. Anyways, animals, and the first guys we bumped into were the meerkats, these adorable rodent-like creatures. This is what the DSLR captured, this is what the phone captured, and with a little bit of an edit, I just tried to bring out the warmer hues in the image. We used a bit of Google Maps and bumped into this nice little hut, and on the subject of software, I got the distinct impression that, yes, this is a phone with compromises, but at the same time, instead of brushing over them, it does feel like Nokia has tried to make sure that they don't cause problems. For example, the phone is powered by a mainstream grade chipset, but the combination of stock and bloatware-free Android means it doesn't feel slow. The phone lacks storage, starting at 16 gigs, but again, Nokia compensates. You get micro SD card support, as well as unlimited high quality storage on Google Photos. And speaking of photos, it was time to properly test this camera. And so the next thing we came to see was penguins, specifically the Humboldt penguins. I'm using the HDR mode for all these photos, and you can probably tell, for a 99 euro phone, this is not something to be complained about at all. I used the assistant to find out a little bit more, and it wasn't long before we were at the next enclosure, zebras. And in true 21st century fashion, we were also out there testing the display of the phone, which, by the way, is a 19 to 9 HD plus IPS panel. Or in other words, it's good enough. It's not some super high-res AMOLED dream, but the resolution is high enough that nothing looks pixelated, and low enough to keep the cost down, as well as the battery powering through. So we sat down for a bit of food, and another thing sprang to mind. You'll notice that the app drawer here is pretty much empty. This is the entire list of apps, including ones I've downloaded myself. The cherry on top is that because it's on the Android One program, you're guaranteed not just an early Android Q upgrade, but an Android R1 too. Completely out of the blue, we realized the window of this cafe looks straight onto the snow leopard enclosure, and the thing came right up close to us, so it was a bit of a rush to get this shot, but especially with a bit of editing, I quite like how it turned out. Anyways, we spent the next 30 minutes trying to find the tigers. It didn't end up being a successful mission, we ended up with giant tortoises. Not quite as exciting, but I did not expect how big these things were. So I lowered the Nokia 2.2 in, took a bit of a blind shot, so I was surprised that first time this is what came out. If you look at the sky in particular, there are no spots of overexposure at all. So as you probably know, pretty much no smartphone under 300 euros has an ultra-wide camera, but this thing does have panorama mode, and so using the ultra-wide giraffe enclosure as a testing ground, I was just trying to see how much this can compensate. So with a panorama you take a shot, and then just slowly pan the device around. You do get a fairly significant distortion effect, but still, massive field of view. 
We finally found the state-of-the-art tiger enclosure, and because this was just past midday, this was probably when the light was harshest, and so it was good to see that the display was visible in all conditions. I gotta say, this part of the day was a massive disappointment. I was getting super excited about this close-up shot of a tiger I was gonna get, but I did not expect just how large this enclosure was, which of course is great for the animals, but just means that you can't really get close enough to take a photo of one, unless you get really lucky. It doesn't quite compensate, but I did find a really neatly designed Lego equivalent, and so I took the best photo I could of this, and then this is my edited version. Anyways, slightly gutted, we started heading back, and even though I didn't get the original tiger photo I planned to, there was a lot of stuff to go through and a lot of great shots that we did get. Speaking of which, I spent half the journey back editing them, the shots you've just seen. Got back, and pretty much the first thing I did was try to catch up on a few of the emails, using this phone. And to be honest, after turning down the super high default vibration strength, no problems at all. It was fine to type on, it was fine to view everything on, I didn't really miss having a much larger screen here. And then, because there are a lot of cool videos coming, I put the phone down for a couple of hours and started editing some of them. Lots of cutting, chopping, trimming, all of that good stuff, and there was also a voiceover to do. And so here's me doing that, filmed on the phone that's just propped on my laptop right now. It's decent 1080p footage. Anyways, back to the phone, and you might know this thing has a raise to wake feature. It was still a little bit too light outside to try any kind of nighttime photo shooting, and so I decided to see how games would work. Actually, flawlessly, to be honest, as long as it's not too complex a title. Okay, fast forward a couple more hours and we're at 9.30pm. It's time for some low light shooting, so I clipped on an adapter that allows it to be mounted onto my tripod, just to give it that extra bit of stability. And from here, there are three photos I took, and you can see when I actually snap it, the phone cycles through a few different exposures, it takes multiple shots, and then meshes them together. It works in a pretty similar way to how the night mode does on most phones, but this one just does it automatically. And you can probably tell that because the phone is capturing quite a lot of light information from these shots of different exposures, you can draw some of that out with a bit of editing. Anyways, we got 27% battery left after 4 hours and 12 minutes of screen on time. What a day. 